Welcome to another video and in this video I'm going to start transferring the old timing components from the old engine onto the new engine and then doing the timing on the new engine. Now I'm going to go ahead and start removing the timing components from the old engine and start transferring it over to the um, new to me engine. Um, so there's a few things I want to mention before um, I start taking things apart. Um, first things first, one of the things um, you want to do um, to kind of set yourself up in the right um, direction when removing the timing components on the rear is um, looking at your cams right here. See how there's like a little notch right here? So you want this notch to be sitting up on top for, you know, obviously if you do it to one side, it's going to be the same as the other side if it's timed correctly. And then you're going to use this tool right here and this is going to go into those little notches and it's going to go in like this. So the reason that I am not able to do this, and I could, but I don't want to, and the reason for that is, so I know there's already damage inside the cylinder walls, and I don't want to um, rotate the engine even more to cause more damage to the internals of the engine. I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys an analogy, and, or an illustration, I mean, as to what I mean. I know it may sound silly, um, just to avoid any more further damage. So obviously the blue is your cylinder walls, um, the green is your piston, and that little red thing is the shrapnel. So by me rotating the engine so I can put in those um, slots, you know, there could be a piece that's wedged right against the piston and the wall. And by me moving up, I don't want to drag, you know, this red shrapnel all the way up and continue scarring even more up against the cylinder wall. And again, I know there's already damage. The walls are probably already, you know, um, scored up. So I hope that all the hustle, so I hope that analogy made sense as to why I'm not gonna rotate the engine to its um, to its um, timing position. So uh, what I, but it still can be done. So all you'll need is a, a um, you can use a wrench or a crescent wrench um, since the wrenches that I have are not big enough. And I believe and I may be wrong, I think this is a one inch. And since I do not have a one inch, I'm, gonna have to, I'm going to have to use a crescent wrench. So on one side, I'm gonna you know, have the press crescent wrench right here. And then on the other side, you know, so this is according to this cam right here. So it's gonna be my, on this side, it's gonna be the mechanical adjusters. So I'm gonna use a triple square, which is a 14 millimeter triple square. And I have a breaker bar. And what you're gonna wanna do is obviously um, put it in place right here. So it's already loose because I did it beforehand before explaining. And while you are loosening this, loosening it going counterclockwise, you're holding this straight. So right now it's only just me. I don't have anybody to help me. So if you have two people that can help you have someone holding this while the other individual is breaking these loose. And all these right here, so there's one, two, three and four. It's gonna be the same process, you know, have the crescent wrench or if you have the actual correct size wrench and if you are able to use this, use this. So do not rely on this alone. So if you are by yourself and you are able to leave it in and you're gonna try use it without it, do not, do not use it without this. Do not rely solely on this because the last thing you wanna do is, you know, it kind of slip out and then all of a sudden, you know, you do damage to these little slots on your cam. So you don't want to do that. You want to use this and this at the same time, if you can use this, which more than likely you'll probably more be able to use it unless you're like me and you can't, this is still okay to use because I'm still preventing the cams from spinning as I'm loosening these bolts. You're going to need these little dowel, these little pins right here. And there's usually, you're going to need four of them. And where they're gonna go is they're gonna help um, have the tensioners. So right now, these tensioners, see how they can... So you wanna be able, so these little dowels or pins, I mean, are gonna, once you compress it, you're gonna stick it in the hole right here. And it's gonna help have this compressed so that the chains are not as tight and can be nice and loose. So we're gonna need them again. There's four, four pins. You're gonna have one right here, two right here, number three right here and your fourth one is going to go into right here you can see them right one right here two three and four and again it does not matter which one you which order you go it doesn't matter as long as all four are in that's what matters now that the tensioner is all compressed you can now you know see 
how loose that chain is. And on this side, how loose that chain is, how loose that chain is now. And then the inside part, uh, I don't know if I can get a good, there, see how loose that is. So yeah, so that's just another way to verify that um, the chains are, you know, not uh, in tension anymore. Um, so again, there's no particular order which way to loosen this. It'll, it's all the same thing. So pick your side and just kind of go from left to right or right to left, whatever you want it. So yeah, so now I'm gonna go ahead and remove these. And one more thing, yes, I'm gonna say it again. Take pictures before you start removing things. It's easier to take things off, but it takes longer to put things back if you don't remember where they go. So next, is going, I'm gonna remove these tension. It's held by the one and two right here. And then the next part will be this part right here. So when it comes to removing this, a um, few things I wanna mention. Um, you are gonna have to wiggle it by hand. Don't try to use a ply or any, or a crowbar, I mean. Just wiggle it by hand and it'll come loose easily. So on all the screws are the same size. So you don't need to worry if one falls out what not, you won't get mixed in with the screws. So obviously there's a gasket, but the most important thing, that's definitely a pricey washer, there's a diamond, ah, don't worry, that some screws fell out. This right here, some more screws fell out. Right here is a diamond washer. That's, you do not want to lose this or bend it or anything of that matter because these are very, pricey to get brand new and i believe i think just this right here is a hundred dollars just one so um these can be reused just give it a good clean reuse it but make sure you do not lose this do not bend it do not um yeah just be very careful just be aware that this where this diamond washer is crucial when it's time to put everything back together that that washer is there so Again, just be mindful, and I know I'm repeating myself, do not, do not lose this, and do not forget about it when it's come to reinstall things back onto the car. Real quick, um, forgot to mention, this thing can come off, and you won't, you have to use another one of these. Don't reuse this gasket. Go ahead and purchase yourself a new one. of. This is my um, driver's side of the upper timing components, and it looks everything that I need to put it back onto this is right here. So I even went to the extent of placing them kind of how they lay. So obviously it's on this side, this the counter is on this side, this um, guide or tent um, guide is on towards the bottom. This, you know, obviously I'll know where this goes and where this goes. So even, even the little things like that, I know it sounds silly, but just doing stuff like this, laying them out in the order or the position that they go on the engine really helps you out in the long way and not just throwing them all in a box and just, you know, you know, get them everything mixed up. I know for some people, you know, they know exactly what they can do with this blindfolded. But for me, since I'm still new to doing this, I'm gonna place it in, in order. And even though I took pictures already, but again, I wanna try and make my my life a little bit simpler as if it's not already complicated enough as it is. Got all the components from the passenger side. And again, this also has that diamond washer that I showed you guys on the driver's side. So this tension right here is a two piece thing. So you didn't, so if you see, so you gotta be careful that this pin, you do not take it out. Cause if you were to take it out, there's a spring in here and that thing's gonna shoot off and you don't want that to happen. So just make sure that you leave this pin compressed the whole time. And this little piston right here pushes up against this, which tensions um, this chain right here. So this is a two piece. Next part to remove is this um, middle um, guide slash tensioner. And again, there's gonna be a screw right here. Two, three, and four. This is off now. And one thing I wanna show you guys, um, so these two screws right here, which are the upper part of the guide, are longer than these two right here. So these ones are shorter, these ones are longer. So you can see the size difference. So if you do end up, you know, getting them mixed up, remember these bottom two are the short ones. So these are the same size, these two right here. And these top ones right here are the long ones. And these go up here. And again, the things that need to be removed, um, the screws that need to be removed from here are the two screws right here for this um, upper tent um, guide, the two screws for the side guide right here. 
um, and then the two screws for the um, tensioner. All right, so just remove the tensioner from right here. So real quick, again, this is another two-piece um, guide right here. Um, this part right here kind of goes right here. That's where the, like the little swivel part is. So there's really no need to remove this one. Um, so one key thing with this one, so if you look on, on the back side, there's a little O-ring right there. So that O-ring needs to get replaced. So um, do not um, go ahead and reuse the O-ring. Just go ahead and switch it out. You know, it's a very cheap piece to get. And again, um, this does, this O-ring will come with that um, timing kit that Alex pr um, provides that from AM Tuning. So yes, um, cool little thing again. The little dowels right there, so do not let this go because again, in this one, there's also a spring right here. Release this right here. The spring's gonna pop out. Then you just have you gotta look for pieces um, everywhere. So yeah, do not let that um, come out. So right now I'm just gonna go ahead and um, place it again. The screws are both the same size. So I'm gonna go ahead and just place it over on this side. So whatever I remove from here, I'm gonna go right away and um, put it right here just by hand. I'm not gonna torque anything down just yet. Um, so there's really no need for me to put this in, into a box because again. Um, I can, this is the only exception where I can go ahead and remove from here and then, um, place it onto this engine because in the little O-ring that goes behind that, um, tensioner is this right here. I ordered, you only need one, but I ordered two just in case I were to lose one because again, these are pretty small. So again, these are, these, these things are pretty cheap, these little O-rings. So I just went ahead and ordered two. As proof, there is the new O-ring right there. So just to show you guys, um, I tried to remove this chain. So I went ahead and removed um, this sprocket so I can remove the chain. And I was hoping to still leave this one on, but this is not letting me come out because um, the heads right here, this part right here, is not um, enough clearance for this chain to be removed. I got the first part of the timing um, installed and I got the the bolts that need to be bolt, um, torqued down, torqued down to spec. So since I did remove these, these dowel pins right here, so these ones, I torqued these down to 10 Newton meters. Again, 10 Newton meters for both of these I torqued down. Um, this right here, the tensioner right here, I torqued these down to 10 Newton meters. And this one too, also 10 Newton meters. Um, this one right here, so this one I put in, the, in the threads I put in um, blue Loctite. And then um, um, I torqued this down to five Newton meters. After five Newton meters, you do a 90 degree turn after that 90 degree turn, I got in total about 18 um, Newton meters total, including with that 90 degree turn. And this one is 43, I tightened this one down to 43 Newton meters on this one. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and install this um, tensioner right here, slash guide. So there's the tensioner part and it's also a guide as well. So as, re as noted, um, these screws right here, one and two, these are the long screws. And the ones on the bottom here, three and four, um, are the shorter um, screws, as you can see the size difference. Um, and real quick, before, um, when we're re replacing this, there's a little O-ring right here that just fell out. You can see it just fell out right there. And here is that new um, O-ring. So this is like the part number right here. And then that is what it looks like. So always, so don't forget, you know, it may be not as small as the O-ring that goes behind here, but it's still um, noticeably, you know, size to go ahead and replace that O-ring as well. The center um, guide and we'll get the chains on. That actually took me a little while to finagle. So you definitely gotta, you know, find a way to maneuver and cause you gotta put the chain and this on at the same time and try to get it around you know, this sprocket right here and then this down one right here as well and the middle one too. So um, finally got it. Again, I torqued these um, four bolts to 10 Newton meters, one, two, three, and four. So next what's left is doing the heads. And again, it doesn't matter which um, you put on first. I'm just gonna go ahead and start on the driver's side. And before, um, if you can remember, I did put all my um, components separate. So here is all my components for the driver's side. Driver's side, um, two things um, to make sure before you start putting things back together. First things um, first is the gasket. So this is the gasket, what it looks like that goes on the driver's side. And then again, if you can see, there's that part number. 
So this is the driver's side. The second part, and again, I mentioned this before, it was, it's the diamond washer. So the diamond washer is gonna go in right here. It's gonna go up against that, and it's gonna be sandwiched in by this part right here. So this part here needs to be um, dry, like a clean dry. So I use some brake clean to go ahead and, and and clean this very well, get any grease or whatever. The same thing on this side too, brake clean on this. And all in here is that diamond washer again. This is very um, fragile, definitely don't wanna bend it. And you definitely don't wanna lose it. Cause again, this is actually, I think the last time I saw, um, it's pretty pricey to replace this. Um, so yeah, so now I can go ahead, put the diamond washer. So you can kind of see right, here where my finger is pointing at, where that little key, where it looks like it's kind of like there's a little keyhole. So that is done by right here. So you can kind of see right here, there's that little keyhole. So I'm gonna go ahead and still do the same. So I'm gonna put this side towards that way because it doesn't make sense for that key, for that little, um, you can see that square to be facing towards me because this side doesn't have that keyhole, but this side does. So I'm gonna try to do my best to again, so see we can see right there with the good lighting, flip it this way so that keyhole is directly in the same spot um, as it was when I um, removed it. Gasket is on, and then the only thing that's holding this up is this little dowel right here. So you kinda of gotta push it in. So it's still wobble on you here and there. And again, the screws still tighten this onto there. Um, there's gonna be um, five screws and they're all the same size. And also make sure to clean the surface on this too and on this part as well. And again, I think, I don't know if I forgot to mention this, but just how that has to be dry, this also has to be dry as well. No lubrication on where the um, diamond washer goes. Okay, I got it on and right now all the bolts are on um, and again, they're hand tightened. I'm gonna do five newton meters on all of them and then I'm gonna finish off the second um, round with 90 degree turns. Next part is to install the mechanical adjuster, which is on the intake representation, and then the sprocket here, that's on the exhaust representation. And for the mechanical adjuster, it gets the longer bolt, and for the sprocket, it gets the shorter bolt. So you can see the size difference right there. So again, longer one goes where the mechanical adjuster goes, and then the shorter bolt um, goes towards um, the sprocket for the um, exhaust side. The mechanical adjuster, you want it to be in the locked position before um, installing. Do not um, install this while this thing can still um, move around. So for right now, so for me, it is locked because it is not um, spinning. This thing's not spinning. It's because the pin is activated, so it doesn't spin. Okay, so what I did was I put the mechanical adjuster and then the sprocket on this side on at the same time with the chain so I can get it looped around this part right here. Then once that was on, I just went ahead and again, I just hand tightened these. So these do not get torqued just yet. Then the next, I installed this tent, the guide right here. This was easy. And again, then next was this um, the tensioner here. Again, that was super easy to do. And then with these bolts right here, I torqued these to the initial five Newton meters first for each. And then the second set was a 90 degree turn. The driver's side is finished. This is not torqued down yet. I'm leaving that till the end, but they're right now held in, being held in place. So next I'm gonna go on to the passenger side. So pretty much what I did over here, I'm gonna be doing the exact same thing, but obviously with corresponding to the parts on the passenger side. So first I'm gonna go give this a really good clean surface. I'm clean this side and also clean that diamond washer. I went ahead and I inserted the gasket. So there's two dowel pins. So there's a dowel right here and a dowel right here that's gonna hold um, this gasket in place. Next is gonna be this diamond washer. I got this on. So right now it's being held by the two dowels that are right here and right here. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and put, install the five um, screws and I'm gonna go ahead and torque those down. Mention this, when you're installing these parts right here, here, um, make sure that they are dry. Like So obviously once it's time to install these, the sprocket, I'm gonna use some brake clean to make sure there's no type of um, grease or any kind of oils or anything like that because it needs to be completely like squeaky clean dry because the only way these things are spinning, the cams, is by the friction that's held on to these sprockets, obviously once you torque this down. So all the thing that's making this spin is the friction from the sprocket, from the mechanical adjusters and from the sprocket. 
that's how these things spin. There is no like little key slot where you can like um, put it in and then it'll it'll turn. It's only these only get turned by friction only. So that's why you gotta make sure these are squeaky clean with no grease. Because the last thing you want is for this thing to keep for this thing to spin. But this is not gonna be spinning because obviously this spins with the chains. But if this is not spinning the same revolutions as this, then that's then you have some problems. All right, so this is torqued down, and I did five newton meters. After five newton meters, the second set of torque is another 90 degree turn. Mechanical adjuster is on, and again, I did not torque this down, I just have it right now hand tight. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and put in this um, guide right here. So again, the circle part right here, there's not a circle part on this. So this goes on this little dowel right here, because this is gonna kind of be spun right here. So now, what I'm gonna do next is go ahead and um, put on the chain, and at the sprocket at the same time play. So now I'm gonna go ahead and put in this little washer. Again, the washer goes so the bigger flat surface, what kind of looks like there's like a little lip right there, that goes towards the um, sprocket and obviously the other side is for where the bolt goes. So I'm gonna type, go ahead and tighten this by hand all the way down. And the next thing will be inserting that guide right there. Next part is going to go ahead and install the tensioner part for this guide right here. So this, again, this part right here, it's gonna be hitting up against this. So it's gonna go in like this. All right, so now this tensioner is now installed. Again, to tighten these two, I did five Newton meters the first round, and then the second round of torque was another 90 degree turn. Now that all the timing components have been installed and torqued down with the exception of this, 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 and that, um, now it is a good time to go ahead now to remove these pins. Again, there's four pins, so there's pin right here holding this tensioner. There's a second pin right here holding this tensioner. Third pin holding this tensioner back here, and then this fourth pin, which is holding this tensioner right here. Now that the pins are all finally removed, so pretty much all the ch um, chains are going to be nice and pretty much in tension now. So there's not going to be any chains that should be in slack, have too much slack at all, but yep. So everything looks good. And again, go through all the chains and make sure there's like no binding. There's no like, you know, a chain that's like folded up, you know, on itself. It looks, every chain looks like to be there. It's in tension. Now I'm ready to do the timing. So before I um, start doing the timing, I went ahead and so my t timing kit didn't have this. So I just got like this really thick kind of um, foam, you know, where we're packing stuff. So I put it on, in between the tensioners here. And then the second one, right here. Since I am doing this solo, with my left hand, I'm gonna go ahead and have the 24 millimeter wrench on this side of the cams, and then with my right hand, I'm um, torquing these bolts down. Next part before I um, start torquing these down, um, there's this tool, you're gonna have two of them right here. So there's your one, and here's number two. So the way that these go orientated is with this rounded part up on top, so this is the um, driver's side of the engine, and here's the passenger side of the engine. So they do not go like this, because even if you did try to do it upside down, you're not gonna be able to align it right because this thing's in the way. So that's why this goes right here. And then once you know it's on this side, so these you're gonna have to kind of spin these right here to accommodate the little key slots or the grooves that are going on right here. There you can see how it is all aligned and this end right here just pretty much goes around the bolt right here. Now I'm gonna do this to 40 Newton meters. Once that's done, I'm gonna go ahead and put this tool on as previously shown. And then with this thing still on, I'll do the 40 Newton meters on this one, then the passenger side, and then remove the tool again and do the 40 Newton meters on this one. So there's 40 Newton meters and the, what you'll need is a 14 um, millimeter triple square. Next is a hundred Newton meters. Next is going to be a 90 degree turn and this is the final um, torque for the four bolts. So next, um, I'm going to go ahead and rotate the engine. Um, so in order to do that, first remove these when you rotate the engine. So these come off, can come off now. Um, I can go ahead now remove my little um, little wedges that I had. 
And then before I rotate it, I got to remove that pin, that crankcase pin, lock pin, and that's still underneath there. Like that's got to be before I can start rotating. So I have the engine lifted so I can remove that um, locking pin. Okay, so when you remove the pin, the locking pin, you want to make sure that the crank case is still in the correct position. These can be removed now before you start rotating the engine. The next part is the most, and not the most, but one of the important things to do so you don't mess up your timing. So the most important thing is the rotation of the engine when you're going to go ahead and rotate the engine. Um, you can do one, two, or three cycles to see if the timing is still in the right place as for what the cam's up in front. So what I mean by that is if you have, if you're rotating the engine from this, from the back of the engine, the way that it rotates and you gotta rotate it in the order in the operation when it's actually running. So from here it's gonna go counterclockwise. So if you're in the back, you rotate the engine counterclockwise, not clockwise, counterclockwise. I know I'm repeating myself, but it's really important to do it counterclockwise if you're in the back of the engine. And if you're rotating the engine from the front side of the engine, you wanna go clockwise. So in this time you go clockwise, not counterclockwise, clockwise. So the tool that I have um, rotates the crank on the front part of the engine. So that means I'm gonna be rotating the engine clockwise. The timing is now finally completed and I rotated the engine as you guys saw um, two times. I did it up to seven times actually just because I'm kind of just um, OCD like that just to verify that by the time that I got to this position right here that all the cams were in the correct position. In the next video I'll go ahead and um, start putting in the timing covers and the valve cover. So for right now, that's going to be an end to this video. I hope you guys um, learned something new today and hope you guys have a good one. Thanks.